Not too long ago, the toy buying world, including parents, kids, and manufacturers, were shocked when the world's largest toy store chain, Toys R Us, suddenly went out of business. And while you can still see the remains of what used to be Toys R Us, and it's kind of, uh, they have a very unique building, shall we say, the memories that so many of us have as kids and as adult collectors going to Toys R Us is not even close to the sum of the loss we as a culture felt from this retail chain going away. Now, while the void has kind of been filled by Walmart and Target and Amazon, it's not the same, because Toys R Us was a destination. And the remains, shall we say, on the American landscape are very noticeable. This is the uh, the Toys R Us in my adopted new hometown of Greensboro, or at least the former one. This is one out in California that's in, still in the uh, 1970s deco before they upgraded in the 80s and 90s to the new layout. Honestly, Toys R Us, or at least former Toys R Us, is, I kind of see them very similar to other retail giants like Circuit City, you can kind of always recognize a Circuit City building. You know that it's been taken over by another manufacturer or like the uh, Blockbuster Video owner. These <laughs> the people who, own, who, who work in, in old Blockbuster Video locations and the creative ways they've uh, found to adapt their signage. All right, but there's a lot more. There's a much bigger issue than just the loss of Toys R Us as a retail chain to both the community, the, the adult collectors, to parents, to kids, and more so to the toy industry and the reverberations that have happened from Toys R Us going out of business. I mean, for starters, every major toy company had huge layoffs because there are a large number of departments that are just dedicated to specific giant retailers at the large toy companies. So suddenly with this retailer gone, the entire group, like the whole, there was a sales force just dedicated to Toys R Us. Now, I know Toys R Us is still in Canada. I know they're not gone entirely, but it's different. Um, I mean, it's a slightly different company. They have way less buying power. And that's one of the big issues. Now, the bigger misconception, though, is that Toys R Us went under because of its own inability to stay afloat. And, you know, that Amazon just came and, you know, gave it a one-two punch that's just not true. Uh, Toys R Us went away because of Bain Capital saddling them with their own debt and then uh, basically skipping, well, not skipping town. That's not how it works. But there was a whole thing where Bain Capital basically took existing debt, assigned, bought Toys R Us, assigned the debt to Toys R Us, and then with Toys R Us going bankrupt, it absorbed the debt and it went away and Bain Capital was now debt-free, or at least that portion of the debt. I outlined the entire thing in uh, another video I did a, a couple months back, I'll link it at the end of this video, going into the details about how Bain Capital did this. But what I want to talk about today are the unintended consequences. Obviously, I mean, Bain Capital's priority was to, you know, eliminate their debt. But by removing Toys R Us, it did a major, you know, I guess you could say, <sighs> scar for the entire industry, because Toys R Us had things going for it that no other retailer did. The first off being aisle space. Toys R Us had more floor space dedicated to toys than anyone else. This is important because in the toy industry, we look at current big box retailers, your Walmarts, your Myers, your, your, your Big Lots, your Targets, Walmart, uh, did I say that one twice? They carry about 20% of all toy product that the industry puts out. Toys R Us carried closer to 80% of it. I mean, their Barbie aisle wasn't an aisle. It was like wrapping around the building. Their aisles went just forever. And when Toys R Us went away and these aisles were emptied, it meant that a lot of brands that were able to live couldn't without Toys R Us. So this is a perfect example. So um, while it was not a Toys R Us exclusive, meaning only Toys R Us carried it, the Calico Critters line found a huge home at Toys R Us, and Toys R Us became its main U.S. distributor. Essentially, Toys R Us acted as a showroom for brands like Calico Critters or even uh, Thomas the Train, another perfect example. These brands had a huge amount of floor space at Toys R Us that they just can't garner in other places. And honestly, the world just isn't the same without Calico Critters. I mean, come on, we all need cute kangaroos. 
Otherwise, we're going to get all aggressive and start taking it out on the kangaroos. All right. So why am I going on and on about calico critters? And, and you know, the, the, this is not really an adult collector toy line, but it's very symbolic of how Toys R Us was able to skew stuff. And going in the total opposite direction, really looking at like little kid product and with Imagine X, this wasn't just a case of Toys R Us having extra aisle space that they could support Imagine X, but they were the only retailer that could literally give shelf space to items that were this big. Sure, Imagine X had basic figures and they had small sets and they even threw in, you know, sort of nods to the adult collector every now and then, which, you know, made Imagine X pretty cool. But it meant that they needed a retail home, especially as it branched out, getting deeper and deeper into character selection. So at Walmart and Target, you will see Imagine X, but the aisle space that this brand had at Toys R Us was unparalleled. They had two and a half aisles, back and front, and end caps, which meant that they could not only enjoy more uh, presence and more billboarding, but the additional space, especially that bottom shelf space, is what allowed Toys R Us to be able to skew these giant Imagine X items that just wouldn't fit in a Walmart or Target big box planogram. And there were so many large items for Imagine X because of the nature of the play pattern, the age demographic, the licenses, and honestly, the easy reuse of tools where they could be repainted and reused for different brands or within the same brand for multiple characters. You'll often see for example, Batman and other DC heroes having the same vehicles or the same, you know, houses. If you look at Imagine X at Target, we're talking, what, three feet, four feet of space? That's way different from the 40 feet of space that Toys R Us gave it. So, you know, I'm going on and on about Imagine X here, but it's bec- it's a perfect example. The other big unintended consequence was the whole only at Toys R Us concept. And I'm not talking about a, a, a brand that could be a Toys R Us. That was, you know, a whole issue. It was the exclusives, or what is called in the toy industry, customized programs. We as collectors call them exclusives. And over the years, Toys R Us was a solution for so many exclusive items. For example, when Guardians of the Galaxy became a much bigger hit than uh, Hasbro or Marvel was expecting, well, Toys R Us became the location for an exclusive deluxe Groot or doing a more adult-centric Walking Dead Negan figure that has, you know, the blood splatter. Not appropriate for kids, but perfect for Toys R Us with the collector vector aisle. When Star Wars had their midnight opening for Revenge of the Sith, Toys R Us was there to not only support it with hours, but product. And it's the same across pretty much all major brands. The additional aisle space Toys R Us had meant that all the brands could expand basically enjoy even more space, which meant more exclusives, more product could be developed to fill the space. So when Toys R Us went away, it basically eliminated this distribution model and channel. So items that were exclusive to Toys R Us, and I know finding a home for Jeffrey as Superman in any other retailer isn't going to happen, but this is a perfect example because only Toys R Us could carry this. With Toys R Us going away, It's not like these items that were developed as exclusives or customized items for Toys R Us could be sort of uh, moved off to a different retailer. I mean, sure, yeah, you have things like the Lego, you know, build a Toys R Us retail shop. That's different. That's like, you know, developed for Toys R Us. But this pack, this Marvel Legends pack, the only way you could get this Mariah Hill and this Iron Man was a Toys R Us. So... These toys wouldn't exist without Toys R Us, and that's why with Toys R Us's decline and, well, non-existence, in America at least, all of these products that were finding a home at Toys R Us, they just cease to exist. It's not like they get shuffled off and sold at different retailers or, you know, they wind up at Spencer's or on Amazon. This Ewok pack that had, what, one, two, three, four, five different unique Ewoks in it, well, if it wasn't for Toys R Us, these toys wouldn't exist. It's not like someone else could just pick up this mod Rock Pie My Little Pony variant. It was because Toys R Us existed that it permitted more toys to find homes and to be even just made and show up on shelf. That's the biggest thing Toys R Us has taken away. All in all, while there's been an effect on jobs in the toy industry, the lack of aisle space for brands that use Toys R Us as kind of a North America showroom, and obviously all of the exclusives, 
think the biggest problem and the biggest thing that faces culture is the fact that with the loss of Toys R Us, we don't have a toy store anymore. I mean, yes, we have mom and pop shops, and those are wonderful. And I always, always go in everyone I can and encourage people to uh, support them. But, you know, that experience of going to a all toy store, a, a store that sold nothing but toys, it was a smile experience. Going to Toys R Us was part of so many of our childhoods. And it brought smiles, it brought happy memories. And you need a, a toy store retail chain to do that without a retail chain how do you create moments like this i mean it's just not possible without a dedicated toy store because big box stores have a lot of other aisles they need to focus on and toys just really aren't the driver toys r us will be missed and all of the benefits it brought to the toy industry i hope you enjoyed this video and it was a good look at what we've lost besides just going to toys r us it's been a much bigger strike against uh, well culture in general Please share this video, tell others, it's the best way to support this channel. Thank you so much for supporting the algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time.